Okay, so we are now going to start talking about dividing with fractions. In fifth grade, you're only responsible to divide using unit fractions. And a unit fraction is a fraction that has one as the numerator. So one fifth, one eighth, one twelfth, doesn't matter. If there's a one on top, then you're working with a unit fraction. Okay? So we're going to start out with models because we start out with models every time. We know that we're going to be tested using models. And hopefully, as we work with the models, it will give you a better understanding of the standard algorithm when we get to it. All right, so we're going to start by dividing a whole number by a unit fraction. Later on, we'll talk about taking a unit fraction and dividing it by a whole number. But today, we have whole numbers, and we're dividing by unit fractions. All right, so I have 1 divided by 1 half written as our problem, and here is my 1 whole. Okay, that is my one whole for today. This is asking me how many groups of one half are there in the number one. So how many halves are there in one whole? Well, to show that using our model, we're going to get half pieces, and we're going to show that it takes two of them. Two halves make one whole. So one divided by one half equals two, right? Okay, we're done with the half. Let's take a look at what that looks like if we have thirds. One divided by one third is asking how many groups of one third are there in my one whole. Well, get some third parts, and you know that a third takes three thirds, or one whole takes three thirds. So my answer to one divided by one third is three. It takes three of them. Okay, now this only works this easily because we're working with unit fractions. Okay, but you'll notice that if I take fourths, so I'm done with this one. If I take my fourths and I say one divided by one fourth, well, we're working with one fourth pieces, and that denominator four tells you how many parts that size there are in a whole. So one divided by one fourth is one, two, three, four. There are four pieces that size. Okay. So if I had 1 divided by 1 eighth, hopefully by now you wouldn't even need to put the pieces down because you're going to say, well, I know it takes 8 parts to make a whole, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if those were neatly placed on there, you would see that it takes 8 parts to make a whole. So 1 divided by 1 eighth is eight. All right. Now, let's look at what's happening. When it was one divided by one half, our answer was two. Two and two. When it was one divided by one third, our answer was three. When it was one divided by one eighth, our answer was eight. When it was one divided by one fourth, did I forget to write that answer in there? It was four, right? So without the pieces, I bet we could look at this and say 1 divided by 1 fifth, and you could tell me, if it follows the same pattern as those, that I just need that as a 5, because there are 5 pieces that make one whole. Right? And if I flip that over and I said 1 divided by 1 tenth, and now I'm using pieces that are 1 tenth to make one whole, I would need all 10 of them, right? So that would equal 10. 